Hello and welcome to the shop. A couple of days ago I had an idea of some modifications that I could make to a Sunline pin. So I came out of the shop and I goofed around and this is what I came up with. I posted maybe a 15 second video to social media and there was an overwhelming response from everyone that saying, hey, we would like to see how you made that pin. I'm going to start this pin just like I would any standard slimline pin. I'm going to mark my blank, get it cut, we're going to drill it and tube it. This section at the end, the little piece of waste, is what's going to become the finial on the back end of our ink pen. A unique feature of this pen is the cap has a custom ring that actually is inset so that it slides over the lower section of the pin. Now the way I accomplished that is I found a pin tube. 10 millimeters appears to be the right size that will slide over the end of a pin when it's turned to the seven millimeter bushings. So we're gonna use a 10 millimeter tube. I've got a piece of Bacote and a piece of teak veneer. Now you could use any veneers you want. These are the thicknesses that I happen to have. Uh, I believe they are 1 16th of an inch. And what I'm gonna do is make a couple of little rings out of these that I can glue onto the bottom of this tube. We're gonna use the drill press. I've got a 10 millimeter bit chucked up and we're just going to drill a couple of holes in this Bacote. With our holes drilled in the veneers, we now need to separate each of these little sections from the main piece of veneer. I'm going to be using a scroll saw. You could do this with a coping saw just as easily. You don't have to have a scroll saw to do this. But I would recommend I made a zero clearance insert out of a piece of MDF because this stuff is so delicate and the hole in the scroll saw is so large that it, it will split. The veneer will catch and break. So if you, if you use a scroll saw or if you use a coping saw, um, make yourself one of those V's that you can slide this back into the back of the V and be able to cut it out you know, without putting a whole lot of pressure on the veneer because it, it's so thin, it, it, it will break. And there's what you're going to end up with. Now that we have our discs cut out, we're going to go ahead and slide them onto the tube in the orientation that we'll be gluing them. So it'll be dark, light, dark. And I'm going to make sure the bottom one is all the way down and level with my table. I come in with a little bit of CA glue. I'm using a medium CA here. It gives me a little bit more working time. It's a little less messy. Put just some drops around the bottom and we're going to slide the next disc down onto it. Then we'll repeat the process. A little bit of CA glue. Okay. And we'll slide the next disc down onto that. Make sure the tube stays level. Press everything into place. And then we're going to hit it with a little bit of activator. Now what you've got is a nice little sandwich there of dark wood. You've got your Bacote on the outside, your Teak in the center. And even though I shot some accelerator on there, we're just going to let that set for a couple minutes uh, while we get ready for the next step and finish drying. I'm at the sander and what we're going to do is we're going to take this tube and see how it's got a little CA glue on it where the CA squeezed through. I'm just going to touch it a couple of times on the disc just to clean that up and make sure that it's perfectly flat. We don't want to sand aggressively, just very lightly square it up. Now we've got a very nice flat surface, totally perpendicular with our tube. I'm over at the bandsaw and you're going to want to put a straight edge, just a, a piece of scrap board will work, right up next to your blade. Now I'm going to just use the back side of my jig. It's not going to touch the blade, so it's not going to damage the jig at all, but you just need something high enough 
for your tube to rotate and not allow the veneers to hit the table. With the veneers separated from the tube, you can see it's a little bit rough from the bandsaw. What we're going to do is just go to a solid flat surface and we're going to use a little piece of sandpaper and just clean this side of the uh, blank up. Looks pretty good. You can see I got one little filing in there. I'll take a uh, tool like a razor knife and just, just nick that out. It's just barely hanging on. The filing is gone and you can see we have a beautiful flat surface on both sides of our blank. I took my back blank over to the lathe and I trued it up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this 10 millimeter trim ring that we made and we are going to, by eye, we're going to center it around the tube, the 7 millimeter tube, and glue it in place. We'll start by putting just a little bit of medium on here. Okay, and now we're just going to center it up and hold it in place. Shot of activator should help it dry. Looks like it did a fairly nice job. It looks like it's centered up real well in there. We'll give this a few minutes to finish curing, and then we'll take it to the lathe and begin turning. I'm over at the lathe, and I'm ready to begin turning my blank. When you slide the bushing in, you'll notice that the bushing goes into the trim ring. That's what you want. Notice the length of this bushing right here versus the length of that one. That's the amount of overlap we're going to have on our bottom blank. We'll go ahead and get this seated on the lathe. The cap to my pen is starting to take shape and look really nice. I stopped the lathe because I want to check down at this end where the trim ring is. And I have about three eighths of an inch of, of depth there. I want to take that down some more, but we're just going to periodically stop and eyeball it. And when we get to a distance that is aesthetically pleasing, then we'll stop. I'm at a point where I'm very happy with the thickness of my trim ring down here. It's not too thick. It's not too thin. I, can, I think it's going to look really nice. Uh, something occurred to me while I was turning this, and that is on this end of the pin, you could actually make it thicker too since you're making the finial and then just adjust your finial to the proper thickness of or the proper diameter of the cap of your pin. So that's something else to take into into account as you're making one of these. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and get this sanded up and finished. I'll do that off camera and we'll come back when it's done and take a look at it. While I'm sanding, I got to thinking maybe I should show you how I round over the end of this. And what I do is I just come in with my sandpaper like this and I just roll it around and that gives it a nice curved effect on the end of the trim ring. You don't want to sand super aggressively. I started with a 240 grit on this particular um, blank because it had a nice surface to it and it's walnut. Walnut will sand away very quickly and I didn't want to get too aggressive with it. It's feeling really nice. A little bit of sanding with the grain. 
and then I'll go ahead and finish uh, the rest of my grits. Off camera, I turned the front section of the pin. I have them both on my mandrel, my standard mandrel, with uh, my nonstick bushings. They've been cleaned with denatured alcohol, and I'm preparing to put a CA finish on this pin. I put a sacrificial piece of wood on my chuck. Now your lathe probably came with a faceplate, so you could do the same thing. Put a sacrificial piece of wood onto a faceplate and accomplish exactly what I'm getting ready to do. I've got the small block of wood that we're gonna turn the finial cap from, and we need to make sure we get it centered uh, on this sacrificial piece of wood. The way I like to do that is I'll turn the lathe on low speed, and I'll just come in and I'll take the pencil and I'll just put it at different points along the block of wood and it makes like a bullseye. And what that allows me to do is take the end of my blank and find the set of circles or the circle that most efficiently centers that block of wood. And once I know where that circle is, I'm ready to take my hot glue gun and glue this block of wood to the sacrificial uh, block of wood. This glue sets up pretty quick, so it looks like I'm dead on where I want to be over here and maybe a little off on the backside, but that should be okay once we true it up. It won't really be an issue. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of extra glue around the project. I've never had one of these come off of the sacrificial block, but I used the heck out of glue and I think that's probably why. Plus, so you're not turning a huge piece of material. You know, you're turning a couple ounce piece of, of uh, walnut. All right, we're gonna let that set up. And once the glue fully cures, we'll start working on our finial. I've given the glue plenty of time to cure. And now what I wanna do is just true this blank up. What I want to do now is this is going to be the back end of the finial and this is going to be the top of the finial. So we just want to kind of pick a point and decide about how large we want our finial area to be. And I want to try to leave as much room out here as possible to be able to grip this for turning. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to guess about right here. Just draw a line. Now what I want to do is I'll, I'll go ahead and take this part down to one quarter of an inch in diameter, which is the same diameter as a mandrel for turning pins. As we start to get close to a quarter of an inch, I'm gonna pause. This is a quarter inch wrench. I picked this up from Harbor Freight, which is a, a discount tool store here in the US for my non-US uh, followers. And they sell basically inexpensive Chinese made tools. I bought a set of these wrenches for just a couple of bucks and you'll notice this end of the wrench is kind of turned off a little bit. I've got a video for how I do this and I'll put a link to it, but I go to the grinder and I kind of grind this uh, off and it makes a sharp edge. And what that does is that lets me come in and I can put this underneath of the longer edge underneath of a piece of wood and the cutter will cut that piece of wood to exactly, in this case, a one quarter inch uh, diameter dowel. Now I'm going to just test real quick and I can see that I'm still a ways off. So I'm going to go ahead and take this down a little bit more uh, because the closer you are to the right diameter, the easier this is. If I have to go in there and hog out material, uh, it's going to make this tool work a little too hard and it's going to uh, be a lot rougher than it is. And we stand the potential of maybe catching and ripping this off of uh, the sacrificial piece of a block of wood. We're close enough now to where we're ready to use this tool. And what I'm going to do is raise my tool rest. I know it's hard to see because you're not uh, coming in from the side, but there is about uh, three eighths of an inch below the tool rest. This needs to come directly in, straight in, and I need the tool rest to kind of press down on a little bit, not a lot of pressure, but just to hold the tool steady so it can do its job. So I need to raise my rest.
The inexpensive wrenches that I use for tendoning, they are known for not being the exact perfect size. So when you take a bushing, this is a seven millimeter bushing you would use on any slimline pin, and it should fit on a quarter inch shaft. When you try to slide it onto the end of your dowel, it's not gonna fit. So we're gonna take just a little bit of sandpaper and we're gonna clean this up uh, with some uh, uh, 120 sandpaper and get it to where this bushing will slide all the way on and be flush with this back side of the uh, finial cap that we're making. Now that the bushing fits and it goes all the way up flat against the back edge of this block, we're going to go ahead and park this block off of our sacrificial piece of wood. I'm going to use a collet chuck for this next part. But after I use the collet chuck, I'm gonna go back and show you an alternative way that you can do exactly what I do to make this finial uh, without having to invest in the collet chuck. We're gonna slide a seven millimeter bushing onto the, the shaft that we created, and I'm gonna slide that into the collet chuck, and now I'm gonna tighten down the chuck. We're gonna turn this little block of wood down to the diameter of our bushing, but I want you to turn it a little bit fat, and I'll show you why. Here's the first pin that I turned. Now notice as you look down on it, you can see quite a bit of the gold ring of the clip. That's because I turned it to the diameter of the bushing, and then as I sanded it, it got smaller. So I want you to leave it fat by about a 32nd, or a little more than a 32nd of an inch. That way, as we sand uh, in pre preparation for finishing, your finial will be a little fatter and you'll see a little less of this gold ring. I think it'll just give a little nicer look to the, uh, to the finial. With my finial turned, I'm ready to start sanding. And instead of starting out at the you know 120 or 150 grit that you would normally start out with on a pin, this is walnut, it's very soft. I think I'm gonna start out about the 220 range uh, and just lightly sand this and clean it up. Once your finial sand it, you're ready to go ahead and apply a finish. I'm just gonna use my normal CA glue finish. Uh, I'm not gonna put that on camera. You've seen it in a lot of my pin videos, but I'll go ahead and finish this off and uh, then I'll come back and show it to you when it's got its final finish. I wanted to mention one additional thing before I put a CA finish on my finial, and that is uh, I removed the bushing and rechucked it back up in the collet, uh, leaving you know leaving a decent amount. I don't want to slop glue on my collet either, but the issue is if you leave that bushing on there, you are going to glue the bushing to the finial, and you definitely don't want to do that. Here's a quick peek at my first finial. All we'll need to do now is just take a, a flush cut saw and we'll just cut it off and leave about, oh, maybe a quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch uh, on the back of it so that we can press it into a pin tube. I promised you guys I'd show you an alternative method for making one of these finials. What I've done is I've gone ahead and put my chuck with my sacrificial block of wood back on the lathe. Now remember, I mentioned earlier, you could do this with a faceplate and a sacrificial block of wood. And generally when you buy a lathe, you get one faceplate with it. So hopefully you do have a faceplate. Uh, I drilled a quarter inch hole, which is the, the same diameter as the shaft of my little finial that I made. 
And I did use a Jacob's chuck and I drilled right down into the center of my sacrificial block of wood. Now, if you don't have a Jacob's chuck, you could take, you could take a drill bit and you could say, take a square, a pin blank, and you could drill a hole right down the center of that pin blank. You could hot glue that drill bit into there and you could come in and it'll center automatically. And as long as you hold the bit level, you could drill into your into your uh, block of wood. Make sure you're running at the slowest possible speed of your lathe. You do not want that thing to be cranking down and catch a hold of that block of wood. So if it's turning slow and it catches, you can let go and you're not going to have an issue with your hands. But I have drilled a hole. It's a decent fit, you can see that. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my, once again, bushing right on there. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this hole with some hot glue. We're going to glue this in and then we'll begin turning. We're ready to assemble our pin, and we're going to start with the nib. Just press that right into the front tube. There we go. Got a really nice fit there. I always like to show the fit because that's what makes the pin. Just makes it extra special when everything lines up so nicely. Let's go ahead and press our transmission in. Get it lined up a little bit here. So it goes in straight. There we go. I'm going to take it right up to the brass and I'm going to stop and test. And we're almost there. You can take a look and see. I've got a little bit more to go. Get my focus adjusted there. I'm gonna go about halfway to that line right there. I think that should probably give us what we need. looks pretty darn good to me. I just realized that my camera is not doing a great job at focusing, so I'm going to try to go a little slower and make sure everything uh, everything is focused as I do it. Um, what we're going to start with is we're going to take our finial cap and we're going to slide it through the clip, and you'll notice I have shortened it. It was about twice that length. I'm going to take some medium CA and we're going to apply the CA inside of the tube. Just going to kind of roll the tube a little bit. There we go. Then we'll take our finial and we'll slide it right into the tube. And I'm going to put it in the pin press. Well, I really didn't need to mess with those, but I am going to put it in the pin press and let, let it just sit there and be held in the press for a little bit. What that'll do is that's going to keep that finial uh, from sliding in or out of the pin. It's going to keep it locked in place, and the glue, the CA glue, will dry around the finial and will have a nice tight fit. We'll come back in a few minutes, get it off of the press, and get it pressed into the kit. Now, one thing I've learned from experience is don't get in a hurry. When you use glue on the inside of a tube, give it plenty of time to dry because I have a pin that I did not wait long enough and the CA ran down the inside of the tube and when I assembled the pin, it is permanently glued together. So don't let that happen to you. I'm gonna give this a little bit of time to dry and we'll come back and check it out. I've given the CA glue plenty of time to dry on my finial. Should be in good shape now. Take a quick peek at that. You can see that uh, got a nice fit. If you look at the cap of the pin straight down on it, You'll notice that there you don't see a lot of the of the gold from the uh, clip. Where on the other one you did, uh, that was leaving leaving that finial thicker made all the difference in the world. There's what the inside of the pin looks like. Let's go ahead and put this uh, put this thing together. We'll slide it right up, and then when we get here, watch how much further it goes in. A good little bit. Made for a really nice looking pin. I'm very happy with that. I really like to thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting. 
I think the pen turned out really nice. I'm very happy with how it looks. It's a very comfortable pen in your hand. Uh, you know, if you like a smaller pen, if you're doing a lot of writing, sometimes a big heavy pen uh, just isn't comfortable. It's got kind of the look and bulk, bulk of a heavier pen, but it's super light, and I think you could write with it for a long period of time. I'm happy with the finial. I still think I'm turning these a little too long. Uh, if it were me, I might make the finial just a little bit smaller. Um, and in the video, I did mention what might be nice is to put a larger bushing down at this end and turn that to, instead of coming down to such a narrow point, uh, turn that a little thicker and then you can do the same thing with your, with your finial. You can make it larger. I think that might be a cool, a cool uh, opportunity. Another thing that might be kind of nice is I know some of you guys like to put, uh, you know, like a grip down at the bottom where you have like a, an area, a thicker area. You know, you could always come out of here and, and widen it out. Uh, and then, you know, put an area, a grip area down there. That might give it kind of a unique look. Uh, all in all, I'm very happy with it. Uh, I, I had a fun time. This was, this was kind of neat to do. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope maybe you learned something from it. I hope some of you guys will try this pen. I would absolutely love to hear what you have to say about this pen. So please leave all your comments below. Uh, if you if you like the video, do me a favor, share it around. Maybe some other uh, turners out there who uh, don't know about my channel might might find uh, find this pin, find it interesting, and I'm going to put it in the playlist with my other modifieds, and maybe they'll maybe they'll uh, find something they like and decide to stick around as well. I want you guys to know that you are always welcome in my shop. You come back and see me again real soon, and have a great evening, everybody. Take care.